300 year old wattle and cob house in ganja village behind the tipu sultan storm in historical town sri rangapatna near mysore there is a place called ganja is still reminiscent of an old village with exposed mud and groups of people gathering around for conversation during the times the house was built the village was self sustainable all their needs were met within the village itself except for salt and clothes which they bought from nearby towns and villages different communities involved in different crafts and trades that were specific to their community for example kumbars potters specialized in making clay pots and pans vishwakarmas were carpenters who developed advanced carpentry skills and woodwork the entire village thrived on barter system like most villagers did in india at that time not relying on external economy they had their own local economy which was based on exchange of goods for services and vice versa all this subsided after independence and thus began a change in the economy to standardize the mode of exchange the process of building was purely local the clay tiles lime wood mud cow dung etc were obtained from the village so were the skills of the masons and carpenters every profession was seasonal even construction for example the current in the river used to bring the sand on the banks when the rain stopped so that it could be utilized for construction respecting the flow of nature every human intervention was harmonious with nature we waited slow and patient for nature to guide us the slow life was harmonious with the laws of nature typology of buildings a 300 year old inhabited and well maintained house owned by gm putilingaya and lakshmi akka still retains most of its ancient history by his grandfather along with her elder sisters in ganjam village this is a row house a row house is one of a row of similar houses that are joined together by both of their side walls this house shares a common wall with a neighboring house that is built in similar fashion the houses here follow a language giving a more cohesive look and feel to the streetscape what is unique about this village is that the houses here are wattle and cob houses with tapering walls the wattle structure is daubed with generous thick cob and these then become thinner as we go to the top generally most systems of walling are either wattle and daub or cob a combination of both is rare and ganjam village displays these unique typology of buildings planning the plan gives a clear idea of the layout of the house the entrance veranda is a large enough space for an informal meeting evening chats with neighbors or a quiet lazy afternoon nap the cool and shaded veranda is a great transition space that leads you inside the house the entrance 
unveils a huge common space that includes an open courtyard. The courtyard was used to dry foodstuffs in the house. The colonnade breaks the long spans and supports the structure of the roof. This common space leads to three bedrooms and the dining hall. The dining hall again leads to two rooms and a kitchen that was later split into two. The planning of houses in the village largely depended on the community it belonged to and the occupation they were engaged in. The veranda was one constant, only the size of it kept varying. As we said before, respecting the flow of nature, every human intervention was harmonious with nature in past. We waited, slow and patient, for nature to guide us. The slow life was harmonious with the loss of nature.